Hey guys, I'm Brad, and about a year ago, I bought one of these little Sony A6000 cameras. This camera is small, it's lightweight, affordable, and it has a great 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, so you get great pictures with it. As an amateur photographer, I've been amazed at the wide variety of different shots that this camera has allowed me to take. I've shot landscapes and girls, spiders and girls, cars and girls with cars, flowers, lakes, and girls, guys, professional guys, and artist guys, monkeys, jokers, birds, sports, planes, and girls with planes. So, how come all the shots I take around my house look so crappy? Let's talk about that. Even if we turn on all the lights in the room, it's still pretty dark in most of our houses. Oh sure, we can take shots using high ISO settings, but those shots have a lot of noise or grain and aren't suitable for printing or enlargements. We can use the pop-up flash to take our picture, but then the shot will look as bad as the ones we took with that $80 point-and-shoot that we used to use. Others insist that using fast prime lenses is the solution. This shot was taken using the 50mm f1.8 prime. Shooting at f2.0, you're still using ISO 6400, and the shallow depth of field creates its own set of problems. Let me show you a method that I've found. It's easy and inexpensive. It's called off-camera flash. Hang on, don't click off the video just because I said off-camera flash and you think that's above your skill level. I promise, I'm gonna make this really simple. The first thing you're gonna need is a flash or two. This is a Yongnuo YN560 Model 2. Since they're currently selling the YN560 Model 4, I was able to pick this unit up uh, off the internet brand new for about $30. Whatever flash you get, you're going to want to make sure that it has an optical slave cell. And what that is, is that's a little electric eye built into the flash that when it sees another flash go off in the room, it fires this flash. Okay, now some of you may have these older flashes laying around the house. This is a Vivitar 285 flash. It's a pretty powerful little unit. I like the flash, but it does not have an optical slave. Well, for about $15 to $20, you can buy one of these little devices. It's a little hot shoe optical slave. You just hook it onto the uh, Flash's hot shoe, and now your old school Flash has an optical slave. Now, let's talk about our camera settings. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn your live view off. To do that, you're going to go to your menu, you're going to go to the second tab, which is the little gear setting, and the second page. You're going to scroll down here to live view and you're going to set it to off. Now let's set the camera's ISO. ISO 100 will get you the best quality photographs but between 400 and 800 will give you good quality shots and plenty of light. Now set your camera's mode dial to M. We'll need to set the camera's shutter speed. To set shutter speed you're going to turn the dial on the back of the camera. A6000 sync speed is 1 160th of a second. That's the maximum speed. So in manual mode, I'll generally start somewhere between 90 and 125. Finally, let's set the camera's f-stop. To change the f-stop, remember you turn the dial on the top of the camera. There used to be a saying, shoot at f8, it'll look great. So I will generally set my f-stop somewhere between 6.7 and 8 for my initial shots. Turn on your flash or your flashes and set the power to between one quarter and one half power. That'll give you plenty of light but will still allow your flash to recycle quickly. Set your slave flash in the room pointed at the ceiling. It's a good idea to set it high so that it doesn't accidentally appear in your photos. Fire a test shot. You may be able to use the A6000's built-in flash pointed towards the ceiling if you're in a small room with a low ceiling to fire your slave flash. I'm in a large room, so I'm using my second flash unit, also set to one half power and mounted on my camera's hot shoe pointed at the ceiling to fire my slave. Our first test shot is slightly overexposed. The blinking lights on the doll's apron confirm this. I'll take a second test shot, this time at F8.
This shot, taken at f8, is clean and crisp. By using f8, we have plenty of depth of field, so everything is in focus, and there's no noise in the shadow area. You may have noticed I used a bounce card on my flash in the previous shot. Here's a shot without the bounce card. I did have to open up a full stop. I used off-camera flash the other night when the kids came over to carve their Halloween pumpkin. I had plenty of light which allowed me to stop down so I could get great depth of field. The light was contrasty, yet there were no harsh shadows. I hope that after watching this video, you'll have enough information to give off-camera flash a try. Eventually, you'll probably want to look into wireless triggers and high-speed sync, but this is an introductory video. Grab some inanimate objects and give off-camera flash a try. Then, when a photo op presents itself, you'll know where to start and you'll be able to quickly make the adjustments you need to get great shots.